This week, HTC and Verizon announced their biggest, beefiest droid yet, the Droid DNA from HTC. Almost immediately, folks out in the blogosphere started drawing comparisons between it and Samsung's largest handheld, the Galaxy Note 2. Well, we're still getting to know the Droid DNA, and a full review is forthcoming, but right now, even though they're in completely different device categories, we're going to do a quick face-off to show you what's the same and what's different between these two Goliaths in three categories. Feel, screen, and performance. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is the HTC Droid DNA versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Okay, so first, like they say in the song, let's get physical. One of HTC's big points at the unveiling was that the droid DNA is not a phablet. And while it may be tough to illustrate on camera, that's certainly evident if you hold one in your hand. In brief, the Galaxy Note 2 feels like a convergence device. That is to say, it feels like a phablet. It's very tall at 151 millimeters and very wide at 80 millimeters. It also tips the scales at 182 grams. The droid DNA is smaller in almost every dimension, 141 millimeters tall by 70.5 millimeters wide, and in those dimensions where it's not smaller, it feels smaller. The DNA is three quarters of a millimeter thicker than the Note 2, but it tapers on the sides to just four millimeters thin. That, coupled with the crescent-shaped body design and very manageable 138 gram weight in the hand, makes it feel wonderfully petite. In short, the DNA looks and feels much more like a smartphone than the Note 2, because that's the unvarnished truth. The Note 2, with its S Pen, added bulk, and wider display, feels much more like the phablet it is. Whether one or the other is better in this respect is up to you, but one thing is indisputable. The droid DNA is not a phablet. Moving on to the screen, the huge selling point of the droid DNA. HTC's product packs a 5-inch 1080p Super LCD 3 at 440 ppi, while the Galaxy Note 2 offers a 5.5-inch 720p Super AMOLED at 265 ppi. And the Note 2's screen, of course, also packs that Wacom digitizer that enables the S Pen, but what most people are really concerned with in this case is the resolution. They want to know, does the added resolution of the 1080p display actually add to the experience on the DNA? And the answer is yes. I personally didn't see the point of 1080p displays on smartphones for a long time. I argued screen sizes were too small to be able to see the differences, but, and this won't read on the camera I'm using, I'm sorry, I was wrong. The icons and text on the Droid DNA are substantially sharper and clearer than on the Galaxy Note 2 in person. I'll go ahead and swipe to uh, an almost empty screen here. You won't be able to see the difference, but there is substantially more detail on the space shuttle on the right, that's the Droid DNA, than there is on the Galaxy Note 2 on the left, even though the screen size on the Galaxy Note 2 is substantially larger. You do have to get close to see it, but the difference is there. The Droid DNA's panel is truly remarkable. Another thing you can hopefully see is the color difference here, with the Note 2's Super AMOLED screen really amping up that saturation, and this is even in standard display mode, while the DNA keeps things much more even, much more true to life on its SLCD3. That is, I assume true to life, I have not been to space yet. The Galaxy Note 2 is powered by an Exynos 4412 quad-core CPU running at 1.6 GHz based on the Cortex-A9 architecture. The Droid DNA includes a crate-based Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro running at 1.5 GHz, also quad-core. What does this mean for performance? Well, here's how the benchmarks turned out. In Quadrant Standard, the Droid DNA got a 7844, while the Galaxy Note 2 got a 6186. In Antutu Benchmark, the Droid DNA scored 14,514, where the Galaxy Note 2 scored 13,529. In Linpack Single Thread, the Droid DNA scored a 191.838, Galaxy Note 2, 64.438. Linpack Multi Thread, Droid DNA, 464.646, 
Galaxy Note 2, 152.916. In SmartBench 2012, the Droid DNA scored 4677. The Galaxy Note 2, 4644. And finally, in SunSpider, where lower is better, the Droid DNA scored 1148.3. Galaxy Note 2, 1041.8. So the Droid DNA beats the Note 2 pretty handily on most of these stats, possibly because of the crate versus Cortex architecture. But listen, before you go gloating or moping in the comments, in everyday benign usage, there's really not much difference in fluidity between these two devices. And that's actually quite significant in this case. I mean, of course, swiping on a launcher or pulling down a notification shade isn't a challenging activity for a processor as powerful as either of these. But listen here. Samsung's TouchWiz has been fast for a long time, but HTC Sense has historically been a very heavy Android skin. While we've always liked its aesthetics, we don't usually like the performance cost it demands in return. But so far, on the Droid DNA, that hasn't been an issue at all. And that's a great thing. Pardon our Nokia wireless charging dock propping up the devices to fight the glare a little bit here. Uh, we're not going to get into gaming in this quick face-off, but just like we did in our DNA versus LG Optimus G video, which you should watch if you haven't yet, uh, we're going to do just a couple app launches to see if we can spot a difference in load time. I kind of doubt it. First off is camera. Uh, we would like to make sure we can take that special shot when the opportunity arises. One, two, three, boom. Wow. Basically an identical boot time on, on each of those, right around one second. Let's go ahead and jump into email, the stock email app on each. One, two, three. Very nice. There that is. Clear that before we see anything interesting. And just to make things a little spicier, let's go to a third-party app like Instagram. One, two, three. Once again, substantially the same on each. And finally, let's go ahead and do the web browser. One, two, three. Stock browser on each. This should be a fresh load. Uh, we're not testing loading speed. One of these is on LTE. One of them is on Wi-Fi. Just checking to see how well the browser renders things. Boom. Well, both pages loaded very quickly uh, on each of their respective connections. Now, if we have a look on the Note 2, we can kind of double tap here to zoom in, and we get that really fast responsiveness. It clears up in a little less than a second. So we zoom, double tap to zoom in. Boom. There that is. And see, yeah, in less than a second after zooming in, we get the pixelization is gone, the text is clear. It's not going to be as clear as that 1080p text, as we'll see in a second, but uh, really, really solid performance there. Nothing nothing to scream about. And our site isn't the smallest. I mean, look at all that. we got a lot of graphics. we got a lot of columns here. There's a lot going on. Um, some animated elements up here, etc. The Note 2 handles it with a plum. Hop on into the Droid DNA. Same thing, same kind of one-to-one -one responsiveness on the finger. Do a little double tap there. We get text reflow in the stock HTC browser, which is a little bit different. Uh, that's been removed from the Samsung stock browser. Not really sure why. We go ahead and zoom in there. Really, really solid. It recomposes the browser page once again in a little less than a second. Really, really excellent responsiveness. Really beautiful text. Tough to uh, see from your point of view, but in person, really, really sharp performance there. And finally, just to load a third-party app that does require a little bit more thinking on the processor's part, though admittedly not much because it's a very old game, Duke Nukem 3D. One, two, three. Boom. Here's startup animations on each. We're not going to play the game. This is just a boot test. Look at that. Neck and neck. There we go. The uh, Droid DNA just a little bit behind. We'll go ahead and leave both. Uh, what do you know? Comparable performance. The game load times were within one second of each other. I'm not going to call that a uh, solid victory or loss for either of these devices. There's a lot more to these devices, like the camera and the battery life and so on and so forth, but we really won't know more about the Droid DNA until we've done our full review, so watch for that. Now, I know a lot of you folks like spec comparisons and peeing matches and seeing who's better than who and so forth, and these are both really, really high-end, really well-performing devices from two completely different product categories. And we have yet to form a full opinion on the Droid DNA, but it's safe to say at this point that people choosing between a Note 2 and a DNA are going to be looking at usability factors and how each meets their own specific needs and whether they need a phablet or a smartphone. 
not at which one is better, quote, unquote. That's going to do it for this quick comparison of the Galaxy Note 2 to the HTC Droid DNA. Make sure and stay tuned to Pocket Now so you don't miss our full review of the Droid DNA coming very soon. Follow us on Twitter so you don't miss that. Pocket Now Tweets is the official account. If you want to follow me, I'm at Captain Two Phones. It's Captain, the number two phones. But make sure you throw us a thumbs up here on YouTube if you liked what you saw. If you want to leave a comment, leave it on the post at pocketnow.com so we can get back to you. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you again soon.